Lewis, and uh, thank you to Lewis and, and Bronya for inviting me here. I, I, I would have been so hurt uh, uh, or lessened if I had missed this. I mean, look at you all. What an incredible collection of love for this fabulous man. Uh, just so many wonderful, uh, profound and funny uh, things have had, uh, brought back to me today. Uh, Bill Young says that uh, David uh, frequently came across as a, uh, no, uh, Bob Scanlon said uh, Bill, uh, that uh, David frequently came across as a, a fumble bum. <laughs> You know, and to which Ann King, sitting next to me, said, frequently. Yeah. <laughs> My first, uh, first time I ever met David, well, I had seen, uh, because Blythe, I had been in, on that University of Rhode Island campus and saw that Marat Saab. Uh, and I remember that football team, although I wasn't there when uh, Marat went running through the the uh, goalposts or wherever he was in the refractory. But uh, I saw that and I, re and I, and I remember seeing Paul, um, I think it was Paul did the Arturo Ui, right? And uh, then the first thing, that, that was in the 60s, right? And then, and then uh, uh, I, I went away and did a theater company in Portland, Oregon called The Storefront. That was a Vietnam, you know, all against the Vietnam War, that's what the function of that was and came back to Trinity, and I think David's first play at Trinity was in 1982. Uh, I wasn't in it, but I was in the second one, 13 Rue de More, which I think is, a, I don't remember 13 Rue de More, <laughs> but I think it was a French farce. <laughs> and my only memory of it, uh, other than, it wound up being funny, I, I think Dick Jenkins was very funny in it or something. And, and, um, <laughs> Uh, Dan Van Barken and uh, and I just remember David sitting. Well, there are two memories of David. One in Thirteen Rue Lamore. One was uh, David sitting on a table on the stage uh, during a rehearsal, and I was sitting in the front row there. And I just remember I couldn't stop staring at his socks because one of his socks was a, a check pattern or something, and the other sock was like orange. <laughs> and I thought, this is the quintessential, quintessential absent-minded professor. And, and, and the way he talked, I just, I love the way he talked. Um, uh, maybe that's what Billy Young reminded me of. Um, you know Billy Young. <laughs> um, just reminded me of a whole shitload of things. But, uh, <laughs> uh, and then in that movie, uh, and he says, uh, uh, a wealth, a wealth of wounding. <laughs> and he'd always go, sometimes he would go high at the end of the sentence, a wealth of wounding. <laughs> and I just, I don't know why I fell in love with him. About that. <laughs> series of Tom Griffin plays, uh, Pasta and Amateurs, and the last one we did was uh, um, The Boys Next Door, and that was the only one we brought here. We brought The Boys Next Door here because it was so uh, successful, I think, I think it was probably a good thing to bring it here and, and play it for a huge audience instead of the little intimate uh, stage that we had down in Trinity, you know. But every time I would do a play with David, and I, I think he did 17 down there at Trinity Rep, and I did seven of them. I was in seven of them. And every time I did it, I felt myself not only more in tune with whatever this non-process that has been described to you by various people of just, yes, yes, that's right. And, and, oh, and another thing, the other thing that I remember from uh, 13 Rue de L'Amour, because it was French, was that um, we were all trying to figure out the blocking. <laughs> because the blocking, and this was, I, remind, I was reminded of this by, when the, the actors get on a stage, and just five minutes ago, you have more, if you have two or three actors on the stage, one in the back, but if you have one, two, or three actors on a stage, David was a brilliant blocker. You know,
because he would just leave you alone. <laughs> it just comes out of actors, and they, they naturally gather themselves in the proper dynamic, and it all works out. If you have more than three actors on the stage, like if you have eight, seven, eight, nine, thank ten, oh, God help you, you'd be three, four weeks into rehearsal, and they'd still all be standing <laughs> <on the line. laughs> And at one point during every rehearsal, if there were a lot of people, if you were doing a farce like 13 Rue de L'Amour, the actors would start arguing with each other, and trying, to figure, trying to figure out, okay, where are you going to stand? And what are the natural groupings? And somebody would say, David, are you going to help us? And I looked out in the audience, and there was David sitting in about the third or fourth row, and he had this huge book of, uh, of French philosophy <laughs> in front of him. And he was leafing through the book, <laughs> trying to figure out some way of justifying some internal intellectual construct that he had going on in his mind. And we were saying, we're three weeks into rehearsal, and we don't know where to stand. <laughs> into you. I remember David saying something to me, and I, I, I wish I could remember. My memory is so bad, but um, I wish I could remember, because that's something, it was a quote from Ibsen, and, and I, I know that there's actors in here, Blythe, you remember it. Some, some quote from Ibsen that had something to do with, it's okay that we work in a, um, an art form that is wispy and ethereal, and disappears and doesn't, you know, that it's not made of, I think his words were that it's not made of wood, it's not made of stone, it's not even made of the, of the black and, uh, and, and white that is written down for posterity, that it's something that just comes on a flash of fire and, and then it disappears, but it, it affects people, it affects them, them emotionally, it affects their lives, sometimes it has the power to change people's lives, which I think is why uh, it's so, it has always historically been so dangerous, particularly in Europe for, for, for centuries and, and over here to the extent where uh, corporate America feels that they have to co-opt it and we have to constantly fight that battle. It's really, really hard, but it's because we're such a dangerous art form, you know, and, and I think that I finally began to get some of that sense of, of the uh, profound beauty of this art form. And, I, and, I, and a lot of it came through the day, a lot of it came through Adrian Hall and, and also Richard Jenkins, but an awful lot of it came through David Wheel. And I, I'm just, um, uh, I miss him. I, I haven't seen him for a long time, but I, when I think of the things that I did with David, uh, The Boys Next Door, and, and finally the last piece I did with him was Juno and the Paycock. And, and it was as if I understood his language. And, we had developed a language between us, and he understood my language. And not, not, not a lot needed to be said. It was just glorious. It was glorious working with him. I don't know where he ever got that little beard that he used to have. <laughs> <laughs> Unless he used to snap it on. <laughs>